The Grandmaster there performing 12 Bar June, of course, one of the songs that people consider to be jazz, Calypso or sort of way, and it definitely had a, a huge impact and a lovely crowd reaction every time. I even actually played it just this weekend on Talk City, and people <laughs> called in and said how much they love it. Somebody requested it since last week. It was Pierre Bacchanal. But this morning, we want to get into a conversation uh, with an, another author who actually wrote a fictional biography of the Calypso icon. The book is simply entitled Kitsch. Good morning to you, Mr. Anthony Joseph. Thank you so much for joining us on the Now Morning Show. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Now, I, I was fortunate enough to witness you reading a little piece of the book at the Bocas Lit Fest, the year that the book was released. And yes. it inspired me to actually go out and purchase the book. Tell me, was it okay. collecting the information for this fictional biography? And I, I put that in quotations because, you know, it's, it's a lot of it is actually based on things that Kitchener would have done throughout his life, except yeah. that, you know, you had to embellish along the way, as I noticed in the book. Was getting that information yeah. difficult? Um, no, because I think people were really willing to talk about Kitchener because he was such an important figure. You know, Lord Superior used to say, Brother Superior, I should say, used to say that everybody in Trinidad grew up listening to Kitchener, you know, and everyone had a story about Kitchener. You know, I spoke to a lot of musicians that worked with him, a lot of family members, everyone had a, a story. So, no, it wasn't hard getting the information. What was hard was really trying to figure out who the man was behind the subriquet. That was yeah. the tricky part, you know. Yeah. For that, you had to, had to really do some, some deep digging, you know. Um, spend a lot of time talking to people on a very personal level to find out, you know, what he was like as a, as a man, you know, as a yeah. person. That was the, the interesting thing, yeah. And what was one of the most interesting parts about learning about his, his, him as a man? Like, where did you learn that, that stood out to you? Um, oh gosh. I mean, one of the things that I found interesting was his, you know, dedication to Calypso and how sort of strict he was. I mean, every, everyone talks about it, but he was very dedicated to the art form in a very, you know, traditional way. He was very strict about who could sing Calypso and what Calypso was and what you could do within Calypso. And some of the stories that, he, that I was told um there was one story about a guy a young calypsonian who wanted to be wanted to be a calypsonian and be in a tent and the guy met him on frederick street and he was walking with kitch on frederick street and he was saying you know kitch i want to sing in the tent so kitch said well sing sing your song sing your song for me and they're in the middle of frederick street so the guy said ah oh, but kitch we're in the middle of town i can't you know you want me to sing right here and the guy and kitchener said to him well if you can't sing here for me amongst these people, you think you could stand up in tent and sing? And he dismissed it. You know, stuff like that was interesting to find out how strict he was, you know. When it came to the, to the music itself. Now, I know yeah. that yeah. in the book, there's an interesting part uh, about his time spent in England when, you know, he was uh, running a club in Manchester, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and, a, yeah, and right a young there. lady. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, to me, it, you know, you, you talk about him as a, as a man, right, and learning about that part of it. And we know that along the way, he had lots of, lots of songs about women, celebrating women and, and yeah. living. And he would have yeah, yeah. been able to, to channel some of that through the music. But his time spent in London was a very particularly interesting time for him being an ambassador mm -hmm. for Soka, uh, for Calypso, sorry, as well as, right. as, well as um, you know, his personal, his personal life. So the part That's of the, right. I'm not right. sure which parts are fictional anymore when I read the, bio, the, when I read the book, I'm not sure which parts are actually fictional. You know what? It's all true. I mean, you know, the, the book is, is true. I mean, I did the same sort of research that anybody would do, you know, in terms of gathering information and the research and speaking to people. What I did that was different was tell the stories that I learned as a fiction writer would tell the story, but the actual stories themselves are true. So, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, let's say salacious details about Kitchener's personal life that I found out, you know, um, and... Yeah, some of them are in the book. Some of them I didn't put in because I didn't want to you know, offend anyone. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't, I mean, I, I don't want to make apologies for Kitchener as a man growing up and, and living at that time, but it was a different time. He lived in a different time. Kitchener lived in a different, in a particular time um, and did a particular, a particular life that was based on being a musician and an entertainer. You could, you could fill in the blanks, you know? Um, but as I said, I'm not making apologies for him. At the same time, he was very dedicated to certain people and certain things that he did in his life. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, there's some, you know, there's some stuff. There's some definitely some stuff that uh, was interesting. Actually, I was doing this. I did this book for my PhD, and um, there was one particular incident which people know about now. That Kitchener was arrested. He was arrested in in uh, Manchester for, let's say, living for immoral earning. You know, which is you know another way for being a pimp. He was you know accused of that. Um, and I did a lot of research in that, and apparently there was a, there was a newspaper article that was in the a newspaper in the UK, and I found it, and it was very hard to find, but I found the information where he was arrested and all. And, and I was like, you know, what do I do with this information? You know, I knew who it was, I knew the people involved, and I went to my supervisor at the time. I said, you know, uh, Blake, I don't know what to do with this information. If I put this in the book, you know, it would, might be problematic. And I don't know. I want to go and offend people. And he was like, you absolutely have to put it in the book. So it's in there, but it's it's less sort of um, graphic, let's say. You know, I didn't want to dwell in that too much. It certainly is yeah. less graphic because I, I didn't even realize that he was actually a pimp. Like when you put it like that, you kind of break it down for me and I understand completely now. But tell yeah, me, was, tell me yeah. about... Yeah. Uh, how do you think that the time spent in, in, in London and England and Manchester, how did it affect his notoriety on the world scale? Well, I think this is where, I mean, being in London, being in the UK meant that he could record. He didn't record in Trinidad prior to when he left. In, he left in 47 uh, and arrived in the UK in 48, June 48. Um, and apparently there's some recording that he did in Trinidad before he left, but no one was able to find it. But he started his recording career here in the UK. Um, and that was important because he was able to record and send music into Trinidad and send music into West Africa where he became you know, incredibly uh, popular. So I think uh, as the, for the artists that we know as Kitchener, his career, recording career at least starts here. I mean, obviously the first, so the glimpse a lot of people had at Kitchener was coming on the Windrush and there's footage of him singing London is the place to me, arriving in London. That was the start of his recording career, so to say. So, you know, and I think for Kitchener, um, speaking to musicians that knew him and worked with him, for, for the most important thing for him was to record. He was really interested in preserving what he was doing on record. And, you know, he was coming up in a time of all the great Frank Sinatra's and Bing Crosby's and all these singers. And he wanted to be like that. He wanted to be someone who has who had albums and records. So being here allowed him to do that, and it allowed him to become famous and become himself as an artist and experiment with different different art forms. You know, playing bass, playing jazz. You know, um, trying to run a club. You know, and it expanded his repertoire and his experience as a musician. You know, and as a recording artist. All right, and tell me before before we go, what do you think his legacy is that he's left with us? I mean, I know he, what he wanted to leave with us, but what do you think he actually did leave with us? You know, I think someone said it earlier. I think um, I think maybe the kind of Sony you spoke to earlier, Pink Panther said it. The Pink Panther you're speaking to? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was saying, you know, be true to your art. You know, that is that is the thing that I think defines Kitchener. He was a man that stayed true, regardless of what he did. You know, regardless of all the experiments he took with music and various things that he did, he stayed true to Calypso. He was a traditionalist in a, in a really deep sense, and he understood that if you could tap into Calypso you could tap into a particular consciousness of being a Caribbean person. And that's what he did. He tapped into Caribbeanness and being a Trinidadian. He knew I can tap into this on a very deep and spiritual level. And that's what he did. And I think that is that is part of his legacy that, you know, if you stay true to your art form and if you understand the importance of the art form of Calypso, you know, not just the musical, but the spiritual level of it. Uh, you can reach a lot of people and touch a lot of people. And that's why, to go back to what Superior said, that everyone in Trinidad grew up listening to Kitchen in some way. Thank you so much for joining us yeah. this morning, Mr. Joseph, and for sharing with us. And thank you for the work Pleasure. that you did in Pleasure. terms of putting together this, this biography of, of Kitchen. I think it's definitely one for the archives that we have to keep and hold there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Had thank you done. so much. Enjoy the rest <laughs> of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's Mr. Anthony Joseph, author, poet, musician, and academic who has written a book entitled A Fictional Biography of a Calypso Icon, Kitsch.
We take a quick break and we come back with more inside the Now Morning Show. Stay tuned.